most of our marriage wasn't so bad. It was more little things, just little red flags. I remember like not knowing him for very long and realizing there was definitely a dark side to him. I would always make sure the house was clean. I'd have dinner at night and he'd come home and if something was out of place, he would just flip out. Start picking up anything that I had missed, toys on the floor. And just huffing and puffing and angry and yelling and it would escalate to the point where he's punching walls or throwing things just badgering me and badgering me and badgering me. The hardest part was just not letting me be alone. I'd get upset, don't talk to me, leave me alone. Let me get away for five or 10 minutes. And he'd be in front of the door. There was a point when I was pregnant, we had fought and wouldn't let me have my space, went in the bathroom, got in the bathtub and comes in and wouldn't leave me alone, rips the shower curtain down, the whole thing comes down and came that far from my nine month old belly. And then the next thing I know, I'm so sorry, and let's try, and that kind of thing. I just figured he was stressed out. He's got to take care of me and this kid. He's got the weight of the world here. I just kept giving him excuses. I didn't feel like me. I felt old. I felt old. I felt fat. I felt like not beautiful being a new mom. You know, things were just, I guess they were just getting worse and worse and worse. He was just more and more angry, and... Our issues, too, were sexual. It was rough and darker and controlling. I started feeling used and not feeling like it was loving companionship as much as disrespected. I don't know. He raped me. He did, and he hurt me really bad. There was a part of me that started to think, yeah, maybe I'm not capable of this. Maybe I should just go kill myself or take off. So then I told him that I wanted the divorce. That was a point, and it was a year and a half of hell after I left him. I mean, harassing phone calls daily. I was more freaked out at the year mark of after leaving him than I was before. Honestly, I felt, what the hell am I gonna do? How am I gonna pay for this? I was working three jobs. I was getting little to no sleep. I just ended up breaking down. I was suicidal, very suicidal. Well, I ended up in Providence Center. My biggest fear was losing my kids altogether. I didn't want them taken away from both of us, and so I didn't fight back. And I found out that he had a court date against me for custody of the children. That was the day that I called the YWCA and told them, I need to prove that I have somewhere I can have my kids. And the same day, they took me over to the shelter and showed me and gave me a really nice room, a couple of beds. Felt so great to put some pictures up of me of the kids. I really just felt like I had some support and some women who've dealt with this and I just had backup. With giving me that place to stay, it just really gave me that sense of, this is possible. So I stayed at the shelter for, for a couple of weeks. And then Leah called me to ask me if I'd like to come in for an interview with the transitional housing. I remember just thinking, this is my last chance. I have gotten up and fallen down and gotten up and fallen down, and I can't screw this up. So I came in and talked with them and just kind of went over what my fears were and how was I going to work with the program to work for myself and for the kids. And that was just such a big day. It gave me just a lot of hope. I remember hearing those words, you've been accepted. I ended up with a nice big apartment with a washer and a dryer. Honestly, I felt like I won the lottery. I actually have pictures of the, the first day in the apartment and my kids, oh God, it was so great. It really, really opened my eyes to just how beautiful and wonderful people can be. I was assigned my caseworker and by December, our house was all set up. 
Just this image will never leave me of, you know, this lit up Christmas tree and some gifts under the tree and Bambi being on the television. And looking at my kids cuddled up on the couch under a blankie and oh, my heart was just overwhelmed and warmed and here we are. We're gonna do this, we're a family again. Once I was in the apartment and had some space to really do more than survive, I made a list of goals. That's part of the transitional housing thing. You make a goal list. For the first time, I actually succeeded. One of the things was getting a job at St. Pat's. It was kind of always the place you want to be is St. Pat's. Next thing I know, I got that job. If it weren't for the YWCA, I honestly think I would be dead. Maybe that sounds melodramatic. At that time, no, it wasn't. If I had called that day and had not been offered some kind of support or help, I was so ready to give up on myself. It was everything I could do to keep moving and breathing at that point. My self-image, I think, has just skyrocketed because I've been through, I, I know that I can overcome, and there is that support. I feel like a strong woman these days. I feel like a good mom. I feel like things are just gonna keep really getting better. It means everything to me to be able to provide for my children to know that they're, they're safe and secure and I'm able to teach them about their own confidence and strengths. They're my world. Honestly, I would not be alive today if it weren't for my children and if it weren't for the support from the YWCA. There's some really great people at the YWCA and they will believe in you. They'll give you that strength and, and encourage you to do the same for yourself, to believe in yourself, to realize your own strengths. My favorite color is blue. I like it because it reminds me of the sky and infinity and I guess our souls and how it all connects.